Welcome to Finance. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to start um, videotaping some of these discussions uh, for um, uh, review purposes uh, or catch up purposes. So, uh, the first uh, discussion in this course is uh, related to Intro to Finance. Um, obviously, the course's name is Financial Securities, but for short, I think it's much better to call it Finance. It gets the point across, and everyone knows that the course is about money or money management. Today's agenda, as you can see, uh, we're going to discuss personal finance versus corporate finance. We're also going to look at banking services. We're going to talk about investment advisors and financial planners. We're going to talk about some of the investments that exist and uh, national and international investing. So this is completely an introduction to the course. Uh, moving on to the next slide, you can see that uh, this slide gives you um, uh, some understanding or knowledge or info uh, about personal finance and corporate finance. So finance is really broken up into two components, uh, personal and corporate. Personal finance deals with, as you can tell, uh, people's banking activities, saving money, investing money, um, and it is really critical to build wealth and enjoy a decent lifestyle. If you would like to do both, build wealth and enjoy a decent lifestyle, uh, a good understanding of personal finance would really give you an edge and um, a huge under, uh, understanding and ability to, do, to achieve those goals. Some of the decisions that are involved in personal finance are, as you can see, when to purchase a car or house, how to purchase these things, where to invest and how to grow your wealth. Uh, if you understand these things at this age, it will be much easier for you to uh, practice them as you are uh, growing uh, older, as you are in your early 20s, uh, in, uh, and then you know going on to uh, late 20s and so on. A lot of people in this world don't even start saving, rather in, uh, you know rather than investing, by the time they're thir uh, before they're 30. So if you have that edge, if you've already started to save or think thought about saving and investing in early 20s or even in your teenage years you have 10 years ahead of them. Um, corporate finance involves money management of the company's assets. Uh, every company has cash and other types of investments. Uh, they may have buildings that they purchased, office or other buildings. They may have land or other investments. You'll be surprised a large number of every company's employees deal with accounting and finance related issues. So a company can be uh, a tech company, for example, or uh, you know other type of uh, resource company or something, mining company, whatever. But they have lots of people working in their accounting and finance departments. Uh, some of the things that they would look at are staying within companies' budgets uh, and looking at forecasts for future, cost cutting. Some of the decisions they may make is uh, should it should they purchase a building or should they rent a building? Should they do short-term or long-term loans? Uh, should they go international or not? So these are all finance-related decisions uh, that require lots and lots of research and lots and lots of understanding of accounting and finance. So if we were to expand on banking services, um, we can look at uh, the fact that there are uh, checking accounts, there are savings accounts, and there are emergency savings accounts that people maintain. So looking at personal finance at this point, um, people usually, when they say bank accounts, they mean checking accounts. But you should have an understanding that there are obviously savings accounts, which most of you might have, or your parents might have something set up for you. And then there's emergency saving accounts, which is what some most people forget. People think, okay, you know, it's, it's okay to have a checking account where you do your daily banking, banking activities, money in, money out, and it's also good to have a savings account, but they forget that emergencies can happen any time, and you should have some money uh, saved in an emergency saving account that no one should know about, except you, of course. Um, and then there are loan accounts. So a bank not just lets you keep money in their accounts, it also gives you loans, such as mortgages, line of credits, car loans, or other kind of loans that you may need. So a mortgage is a loan, a special loan, which is against an asset, a real estate asset, like a house, a building, a land, something like that. 
So it is a special loan where the interest rates are much lower, but you can um, pay it off on, in a longer term, like 25, 30 years. And by the end of that, uh, by the end of that number of years, the house or the asset belongs to you. Uh, other loans, for example, car loans can be shorter, like six years, but the, uh, the interest rates are higher. And then obviously there are investment accounts that you have with the bank. Uh, we will get into those later on in the course. And insurance services. A lot of banks offer insurance services and uh, I'm sure you will, might have an understanding of car insurance or house insurance. Some of you may also understand life insurance, but uh, we'll get into some of that, not too much in this course. Investment banking is something which is uh, for wealthy individuals. So once you have saved up, let's say $250,000, $300,000, then you would be dealing with private investment advisors or you would be doing investment banking and stuff like that. <laughs> Moving on to the next slide, it tells you uh, the difference or the relations between IAs and CFPs. IA is a designation that stands for investment advisor. I'll, I will go over how to become an investment advisor probably next uh, um, presentation. CFP is a certified financial planner. So both of these people deal with investments and obviously savings and, and loans, life insurance, how to achieve financial goals, and they also look at tax saving strategies. These people earn their money through client fees and commissions. Uh, and these people are highly educated advisors. They usually have one or two university degrees. Sometimes they have 10, 15, 20 years of experience prior to becoming an advisor because of course, if someone is taking your advice, they need to know that it is sound advice. Uh, some of the various investments that we're gonna deal with are uh, shares and stocks. Someone asked me uh, the other day, how does a stock work? Well, we will talk about what is a stock and how all that works, but at this point, if you have an understanding of a stock, that would be great. So a stock represents ownership in a company, which means that all shareholders or stockholders, interchangeable terms, are owners of a company. So if there are one million shares out outstanding and you have one share, you are one one millionth of the company's owner. If there are 10 shares outstanding and you have one share, that means you are one tenth uh, owner of the company. Uh, initially, they are sold by the company. So first, the company sells them, but then the people buy and sell among themselves, the various investors. Again, I'll get into this. This is, you know, I'm just introducing the concept. There's a lot more depth into this. Owners are called shareholders or stockholders. These people, the shareholders, elect a board of directors. So BOD stands for board of directors. They elect the board of directors. The board of directors hires or selects the president. So the president does have a boss and they are the board of directors. Bonds are completely different. That is a, similar to lending money to the company. So if you're a bond holder, you have in essence lent money to the company. And we'll get into bonds later on as well. So the next slide talks about mutual funds. Mutual funds is a specific type of investments. There's a whole chapter dedicated to that. Derivatives, you might have heard of the word derivative uh, in calculus, but we borrow some terms from different areas, chemistry included, calculus included. And derivatives basically means that it is not the company that you're investing in, it is something, you're investing in something that invests in the company. So basically, it is a derivative investment, it's a second tier investment, and they may include terms like options, futures, swaps, and we'll get into that if we have some time near the end of the course. Foreign exchange investing, of course a lot of people feel that you know if I buy US dollars today, I may sell them for a profit tomorrow. That is foreign exchange trading or investing. REIT, REIT units, REIT stands for Real Estate Investment Trust. Again, we'll get into those type of investments. Uh, and real estate itself, so obviously a lot of people have this goal in mind that they want to, uh, uh, they want a residence to live, they, then sometimes they want a second property that they can rent. They also would like, some people would like a commercial property, an office property or uh, a retail store or something that they can buy and rent. Um, and 
the purpose of real estate investment is usually to make rental income or to buy now and sell later. So uh, we have introduced uh, we have been introduced to the concept of finance. In essence, the two areas, personal and corporate, and you understand you should understand some of the differences between them. And we talked about some of the investments that we will be focusing on in this course. So thank you for listening, and we'll continue uh, with with the, the next presentation tomorrow.